We've now finished the second row of blocks and we can really see the pattern beginning to emerge. We're going to repeat rows 1 through 12 of the stitch pattern until the purse measures approximately 22 inches from the cast on edge, ending after row 12 of the stitch pattern. Once you've completed that, we'll come back and we'll finish off together. Look how beautiful your knitted fabric is. You can see the pearl blocks alternating with the knit blocks, with the pearl blocks. Look how pretty that is. We're going to now bind off in pattern. So we're going to bind off pearl over the pearl stitches and knit over the knit stitches. Binding off in pearl and in knit alternately is very easy and I'm going to show you how we do it. We're going to purl two stitches, one, two, and then bind off the first one by pulling it over like this. Purl the next stitch, pull the first stitch over and off. Purl another stitch, slip the first stitch over, bring the yarn to the back, and knit. I'm going to knit one stitch. We're going to slip the purl stitch over and off loosely so that our bind off edge isn't too tight. Knit the next stitch, pull the first stitch over and off to bind it off. Knit the next stitch. Slip the first stitch over the second stitch loosely. Knit the next stitch. Pull the first stitch over the next stitch and off the needle to bind it off. Bring the yarn to the front and purl the next stitch. Let's continue like this, binding off in pattern until all the stitches of our piece are bound off. When you get to the very end, you'll have that one stitch remaining. Go ahead and fasten that off, and I'll meet you right back here. Now all you need to do is whip stitch the side seams, add a great closure if you want, and maybe even a pretty embellishment. To do the side seams with whip stitch, you're going to fold about eight inches up with the right sides facing. Pin it into place. You don't need a lot of pins, just enough so that you know that your side seams are going to be straight and not gathered. And a whip stitch, we're going to use yarn and a yarn needle. If you started off your project with a long yarn tail, you can use your tail to sew the side seam. That's what I always try to do. Thread your yarn through the yarn needle. And to whip stitch the seam, all we're going to do is go from one side to the other and back, catching the sides of the fabric on one side and the other all along the side of the purse. Make your stitches pretty close together so that all of your stuff doesn't fall out of the sides of the bag. So just continue this all the way along the side of the bag. And I recommend that you try not to actually pierce the strands of yarn as you're stitching. If you go in between stitches, your seam is going to be neater. Try not to actually pierce the yarn like this. It's not going to be a strong seam. Continue this way until your entire seam is complete. You might want to line your little basket weave purse. To do this, it's very easy. Just cut a piece of fabric to twice the size of the inside of the purse, allowing one quarter inch seams on each side. Sew them into place, and then insert this pouch into the inside of the purse where you'd like it, and whip stitch it into place as we have here. It makes your purse much easier to carry, better for every day this way. You can purchase some swivel hooks for your bag and sew them into place so that you have some way to attach a nice handle to make this useful. If you don't want to wear your bag with the handle, 
you can just attach it. Tuck the swivel hook in and you've got a nice handy clutch bag. Add a little embellishment such as a pin and you're ready to go. If you'd like to change the size of the bag to make it larger or smaller, just add or subtract four stitch blocks. It's easy.